Lambda is an opposite of exchange. So how does it become a mode of exchange? Continuous plundering requires some kind of redistribution. That is to say, the ruler needs to take care of the ruled. Uh, this redistribution has at least historically uh, taken the form of public undertakings such as irrigation projects um, or welfare or security measures. Yet, taking this into consideration, it is my view that plunder and redistribution uh, can be considered as a type of exchange. And needless to say, it is this mode of exchange which becomes the prototype for the state. As Max Weber put it, the essence of the state uh, lies in the monopoly of violence, or rather, precluding the violence of others as uh, illegitimate. The rulers cure the rule from the violence of others, but that alone is not enough. The state emerges when the rulers distribute wealth to the ruled in some form or other. Therefore, the state seems to assume a public aspect from the beginning. Thus, it may be said that the state is based on mode of exchange B. Unlike plunder and mode of exchange C, uh, that is commodity exchange, is based upon mutual assent. Despite appearance, appearances, however, the human relationship in commodity exchange are not necessarily equal. Commodity exchange, strictly speaking, takes place not as an immediate exchange of products or services, but as an exchange between money and commodity. And as Marx put it, money has a, a right of pledge to exchange with commodities, while commodity does not. Those who own money can get others' products and can make others work without recourse to violent coercion. Therefore, those who own money and those who own commodities are not equal. Capital gains surplus value through commodity exchange. In this way, mode of exchange C engenders class relationships that are distinct from uh, the ones caused by mode of exchange B. And so long as commodity exchange is conducted with capital, uh, capital will engender surplus value accumulation, as well as uh, class divisions and conflict. <clears throat> uh, finally, in addition to uh, these three modes of exchange, I must also talk about the mode of exchange D. This one uh, not only rejects the state that is brought about by modus B, it also goes beyond the class divisions engendered by commodity exchange or modus C and recovers the principles of, re of reciprocity from mode A on a higher level. This is a mode of exchange which is at once free and reciprocal. It may be called communism, socialism, associationism, or whatever you like. As you may, not, may notice, what Chomsky categorized as libertarian socialism is derived from mode of exchange D. Unlike the rest, the, this mode of exchange does not exist in reality. Uh, it exists only as a negative idea to use Kant's term. Uh, I will discuss this in, in detail in the next lecture. Uh, I, I also, I, I will go on to uh, discuss how the new social formation of the capital nation states came into being as the conjugation of these three, these different modes of exchange and how we can deal with it today. So, oh, <laughs> thank you.